What advice would you offer early stage founders who are looking to make a positive impact uh, with their startups, in, especially in, the ter- in terms of securing the right type of funding? Yeah, look, I think, you know, that, that's, that's something that we've spent a lot of time on and that I've spent a lot of time on over the last 10 years is um, you know, I think it's generally accepted now that maybe it wasn't as visible 10 years ago that um, there's just not the innovation in the types of finance that's available that often meets the needs, particularly of impact entrepreneurs and impact founders. But I think, it's, I think it's, there's a general kind of gap of kind of availability of capital for early stage businesses. Um, I think Judo Bank did a piece of research, you know, maybe five years ago now, which said there was like a $90 billion capital gap for small and medium sized enterprise just in Australia, right? Like I think globally, we talk about a $5.2 trillion gap for the missing middle for SME finance. Um, So, you know, it, it, it's it's challenging because like really your primary options are to go to a bank. And when you're an early stage impact entrepreneur, no bank's lending you money, you know, mm-hmm. you, and that's not what Hard you need. Hard to get anything really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or you go Which and you raise great. equity, right? And if you're yeah. raising equity, well, that says you have to be a certain type of business. You have to be a commercially focused venture. You have to be for profit. You have to have shares that you can sell to people. And what we've, what we've observed is a lot of, you know, Unfortunately, and this is not an Australia-only challenge, um, unfortunately, the types of capital that are available kind of lead people to make decisions about the kind of business that they need to be as opposed to thinking about what's the problem I'm trying to solve. Um, and, you know, I think, I think the thing that I guess I have learned, and it's hard, it's hard every day to do it, is to try and understand what's the problem you're solving and what do I need to, what do I need to do to be able to solve that problem? And what's the right type of capital that allows me to continue to focus on doing that? Yeah. And it's I a think, key question, isn't it? If you don't know what problem to solve, then really you've got nothing. Yeah. But I think, I think yeah. when people think about the problem, they don't, they don't, they don't then make the separate connection to, well, what's the type of capital that best suits yeah. me yes. for what I'm trying to do there? Because yeah. I think in general, Capital is so scarce that we'll take whatever we can get and we'll contort into whatever we need to be in yeah. order to get the money that we think we need, right? And um, yeah. and so, you know, with with my journey, I guess you hang a shingle out and say, well, we can help you get money. Everyone comes knocking because everyone needs money, right? Well, I think <laughs> I'd say at least five times out of 10, at least 50% of the time, it's not that they need money. Like they just need some advice or some connections or some you know some support on particular growth strategies or whatever Mm -hmm. to kind of figure out to get to the next stage and quite often if they do need money the kind of money they think they have to go for because of what they see in the market is way beyond you know we've seen people kind of go well i've spoken to some investors they're not going to look at me unless i do a million dollars plus because the cost of due diligence so i need to figure out like an equity raise of a million plus to be able to go out and get investment in my business. It's like, well, what do you need? Well, I need $60,000 to buy this container of stuff from Pakistan. (laughs) It's like, well, could we give you $60,000 and you can do that, you know? And, (laughs) and, and so, you know, I, I I think, I, I, I do think that the, the capital landscape does impact what, problems get solved. It, it, it does impact what things get money. Um, you know, I think increasingly people recognize that the, the Silicon Valley VC model does only work and is only relevant for like 5% of businesses. And of those 5% of businesses it's relevant for, most of those are not going to achieve the venture scale and venture returns that that money is looking for anyway, you know, and, and the, the investors know that. And so, therefore, their expectations of those ones that succeed are very high for them to be able to make their money, right? And so, you know, I think I think it's a real challenge for impact enterprise founders to kind of piece together the kind of capital journey they need to get big. And mm-hmm. even if they do successfully do things like get money from friends and family, they do do successful like donation or reward-based crowdfunding campaigns, which are very good ways to kind of activate and build a community and get started. Yeah. You do hit this point where you kind of like, 
I'm too big for that now, but I'm not big enough to go and get a bank loan. Yeah, or I'm not big exactly. enough to yeah. go and get equity. Yeah. And that that missing middle is yeah. the is the key thing that you know myself and others are trying to figure out. How do we make it easier for founders to make that move? And I think increasingly people upstream with capital are beginning to understand that's possible. You know, certainly we do we do work with DFAT and you know they're beginning to understand the role of kind of blended finance and different types of capital across that to help ent- entrepreneurs and enterprises get big enough that they're relevant for where the capital market is quite mature. Like once you get to that VC stage, yeah. the capital markets there are pretty good, but like they're pretty mature, they know what they're doing. But yeah, it's kind yeah. of getting people to that point that is the harder, the harder thing, right? It is. And it so is exactly that gap there. I mean, there's lots of VCs companies now in in, in Australia. Like yeah. before, I think 20 years ago there was like three, and now I don't know, it's hundreds. Yeah, no, it's true. It's it, yeah. it's it's much better now. But that's just what I'm saying. Like it's sophisticated. Work. Like, that's not a problem we need to solve. So back to my thing about solving problems. Yeah. That's not a problem I need to solve, right? Like that's yeah. that's done. It's more yeah. about how do we get, how do we how could we nurture more impact entrepreneurs to get to that stage where they yes. where they can access that capital? Yeah. But equally, how do we give them options where they never need to take that? Like because their business model is not grounded in an exit. It's not grounded in a 40x return. It's grounded in a particular problem they want to solve and they want to be able to do that profitably, but not necessarily at the scale that they would need to do to satisfy kind of venture capital requirements. So yeah. how do we help them get money what does that look like how do we make impact debt more accessible and more available how do we make yeah, yeah. other types of finance other types of instruments revenue based loans profit sharing agreements all those other kinds of tools which just don't have the same mind share like when people think about funding no. they think about vc they think about That's equity good. pitching shark tank all that yeah. stuff right yeah, and again absolutely. that is not that is not the source of funding for 95 percent of businesses like that's yeah. just not where to go um so, you know, like that, 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 that is, you know, I, I guess for founders, I'd just be saying as early as you possibly can go and talk to mentors, talk to advisors, like contact me, you know, like to mm-hmm. say, I'm interested in thinking about what my options can be yeah. so that you don't lock yourself into certain pathways too early, that you begin to think about what's out there. And there's an awesome tool and maybe I'll, share that with you, Paul, called Capital Explorer that you can put with the notes for this, which has been built globally, um, which is a thing for entrepreneurs and founders to log on to, ask you a bunch of questions and kind of tells you based on what you're doing and where you're at and how much money you're earning, blah, blah, this is the kind of best suited types of capital for you. And here are some of the sources of where you can get that capital from. So stuff's beginning to be built now to help solve this, um, Mm -hmm. which is really exciting. You know, and I think that's one of the things about working globally is I see all of the alternatives, like the alternatives is kind of my world, right? And there's so many options emerging, so many funds emerging that are trying to do things different to fill this missing middle. Um, and that's really exciting. But, you know, because it's because it's probably by design quite decentralized and small, it's hard to find, right? And so nice. that's, that's the challenge. Like that market is very distributed, unevenly distributed mm-hmm. and for you as a founder to find that it's much harder than going to finding blackbird you know and yeah. and yeah. you know and getting funding from them right it's just it's yeah, yeah. it's a different it's a different journey 